Thanks everyone for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, this idea for this class came to me, you know, through uh, an email request um, to really take um, take a look at price action. You know, I get questions all the time when I'm working with people. As you guys know, I do a lot of individual coaching. I do um, a lot of work with different folks. And you know, the questions continue to crop up. Anybody in here have questions about setting alerts, where to buy? Um, how to look at that price action or study that price action for good potential trades. And that's what um, I want to talk about tonight because I, I know I take it for granted sometimes that um, I, I have made um, a career out of studying price action, okay? And sometimes, um, sometimes I, admittedly, I, I think everyone sees what I see, but I fully understand that you may not. And I want to help you get there. Um, not that the way I trade is, is perfect or, or even right for you but maybe um, some ideas on how I can help you um, see those things in a chart. Now, one of the things that I do, and, and I gotta really encourage everyone to do this, is get a simple chart. Um, most of my trading decisions, most of my trade signals, most of my, intra my actual trades come from this chart. If I need to look at a 3.8 trap to confirm what I'm seeing, it's a real quick click. I can confirm it and then move away. I study the price action of the chart. So let's take a look at a couple of charts and see if we can, if I can help you with some of those in, in a couple different ways. And one a chart came up today that um, we talked about just a little bit and I alerted everyone to Kroger in here the, uh, my alert was right there on that chart now one of the questions that comes up a lot is well when you put an alert there do, what do you do with that yeah um, do you buy it when it alerts do you wait do you oh, how do you handle that well for me I, I will tell you guys that if I've made the decision that today I have an open, uh, you know, I have room in my portfolio, I want to trade the market, I've done that evaluation of the overall market condition and I want to trade. When this alert triggers, that's when I enter the trade. Okay, I don't wait for the candle to close. I don't wait around to see if it follows through. I usually trade that candle and when I'm setting these price alerts I'm always thinking about the trade setup itself so this one here is kind of a pop out of the box type pattern you guys know that if I'm gonna be doing this I'm gonna have my stop loss right underneath here and that question that keeps coming up well what happens if it pulls back during the day I don't care and that's the, that's the truth of it. I don't care because when I plan my trade, I know that from here to here, the risk of that trade is acceptable. So it doesn't matter. I have no idea if this trade is going to work. And one of the things we have to do when we start studying price action is we got to get past this idea that we're always going to be right on a trade. That you know exactly when a trade is going to work and when it's not. Anybody in here that's had success with like the 3-8 trap that still has losing trades? We have losing trades because that's what this job is, right? This is a risk business. Okay, there's no guarantee a trade is going to work. And all the second guessing in the world on this candle well, what if it pulls back? What if it, do it doesn't matter? What matters to me is how much risk am I taking on the trade? And is that trade, that risk, acceptable? Is it okay? 
That's the only thing I really have any control over. Okay, I don't have control over what happens next in the market, nor do you or nor does anyone else. All we can do is define our entry and our setup. Can we all can we all agree on that? What happens next is out of our control. If we plan our trade and we put together the position and we understand the risk as being acceptable, then if we're wasting a whole bunch of time trying to second guess the white a what if or micromanage this entry here, we're just making ourselves frustrated because there's, there's no influence that we can have over this trade other than our entry and how we intend to manage that trade. Now, one of the problems that I run into a lot is people give lip service to the idea that, yeah, I planned my trade. But then at the same time, well, man, I just taking too big a losses on my trades. What's going on? Well, when you're taking too big a losses on your trade, I'm going to I'm going to probably suggest that you're not planning your trade. You see, one of the things that I run into all the time when I'm working with people is we're in the constant chase for the white candle. How many of you guys, every single one of your scans is out there is a scan. You're searching for the white candle, right? When we're flipping through charts, we can't flip through them fast enough trying to look for the white candle. Now there's a big difference in this white candle and this white candle, right? This one's not so impressive. You might look at that, second guess it, try to micromanage it. But when this candle comes out, if you jump on that candle, you're taking a tremendous risk in the trade. You're chasing. See, for me, if I don't catch this entry, this is too late. Now I have to wait for the next entry into the trade. Okay, so searching for the big white candle never worked very well for me. Finding the trades that were trying to set up, now that worked for me. Okay, now we took a trade here in Kroger earlier and made some money on it, closed the trade down, um, but a beautiful entry in here yesterday that I alerted everyone to. I chose not to take it just because I thought the market was kind of funky yesterday in that rally and I didn't want to chase into a move. I just, I just felt like I had enough positions on and I took some great profits today because I just kind of held the line. Okay, took off some, well, actually some, uh, it was a fantastic day for me. <clears throat> but the point being is we have to be patient and wait for the trade and then wait for the trade to either work or to fail. Okay, we can't control and how many of, how many of you guys have learned this over, over time, no amount of you sitting and staring at your brokerage account, blinking and clicking along, or staring at that candle wiggling around makes any difference. Is there anyone in here that would like to, to admit that you stare at these candles all day long and it's, well, doing that's not improving your profitability, is it? In fact, wouldn't you say that staring at those candles all day long is driving emotion in your trading? So the best practice is to plan those trades, look for those entries that are coming, not already there, look for those trades that could set up, and then make that trade come to you. See, when I do this and I set a price alert like this, I can actually look at the options, find out whether there's an option trade or if this is a stock trade, whether I want to waste any time with it or not. 
okay? So I'm always kind of preparing for my success. I want to be ahead of the game. Now I trade two basic patterns, okay? And I repeat this stuff over and over and over. And but I often think that sometimes they we 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 as traders, I did this too for a long long time. How many of you guys will um will agree that as technical traders, we just tend to overcomplicate everything. We overanalyze, we spend, we agonize, we do all of these things, particularly if we've lost some money in the past. And so what I ended up doing, I tried to master everything in the market. But I finally realized that is if I just picked out a couple of typical patterns that repeat themselves in the market over and over, then I can work to be the best I can at this pattern here. This is a stock trending, a pullback opportunity trade for an entry. The next pattern is the stock trending and the pop out of the box pattern. Okay, so I have trends and I have two basic patterns that I trade. Okay. Now in this chart, if you look at this chart, there's been many opportunities here to trade this trade. And let's talk about that for a second. I'm gonna remove these drawings. And I wanna pull this chart back, okay? I wanna pull this chart back so we can't see that history. And let's think about those two patterns that I just talked about, okay? Those two patterns that were looking for potential entries. And, and by the way, guys, I really want to encourage you to do this exercise. Um, I was really um, crazy about this. Um, and what I mean by that is I would finally get a day off of work, which was rare for me, but I would sit down, I would sit down in front of a computer and I would put in these marathon periods in front of a chart. And I'd ask myself questions, okay, how did I miss this trade? You guys ever ask yourself that question? Or how many of you have ever found that trade and then chose not to trade it or talked yourself out of it or overanalyzed it, missed the trade, and then go back two or three weeks later and go, oh, for crying out loud, how did I miss this? Anybody ever done that? I used to do that all the time. And I figured the only way I could solve that problem is to go figure out what it is I missed in that chart to study that price action. So you guys know the patterns that I'm looking for. And let me just say this, if we have a chart that has been doing this and it pops up here, is that my pattern? No. So when I see this, even if this is a beautiful big white candle, does it matter to me? It means nothing to me. I don't waste my time with things that I don't trade, that I, I just have no interest in. In fact, you're going to see me do this over and over and over a thousand times and maybe more over the course of a year, and that is draw a downtrend and say I'm not interested until it breaks that downtrend produces a higher low and then shows me a buy signal because that is the very beginning of my trend. Until that occurs, I am not interested. Okay? And there's no gray area here for me. Zero gray area. Now I know Rick likes to trade the pinball, pick things up off the bottom, and that's perfectly fine. That's just not me. I, I, don't, I don't trade them. I do very, very simple things. I've built a career out of being extremely simple in my trading. And I just repeat the same things over and over and over again. 
So if I run this chart one day at a time, and I used to just spend, by the way, you can do this with TC2000. You can use your bracket keys, pull the chart back, use your bracket keys, go forward, backward, one period at a time. If you go on a five minute chart, it's one candle at a time. Okay. And I would literally spend hours on a list of charts. How did I miss this trade? And I would study the price action moves here. Okay. So we move higher and then we start pulling back. Now, how many of you guys look at this chart right in here and see this as being a relatively volatile move to the upside? Big white candles. When I see lots of big white candles, big black candles, lots of wicks and tails, that always gets me a little bit worried, okay, that the volatility is so high that I, I give up some of my edge, okay? But let's draw this chart up a little bit. Would you guys agree if I drew this out and I could extend that over a little bit? If we held above this price support area, settled back into this trend, that I might have an opportunity for a trade. See, we can see that ahead of time, right? I don't know if it'll play out, and I'm not trying to predict whether it will or not. All I'm trying to do is look at the chart and say, is there a potential trade that could occur here? And I'm preparing for that. Okay. And this is one thing that is just so different in the way I trade over what I see most people do. Most people are chasing the white candle. I don't. I quit doing that so long ago because all I was doing was racing around. I was frustrated all the time. I was missing trades. I was chasing trades rather than making the trade come to me. So I can see a potential trade that could occur here. I don't know if it will or it won't. Now here's a rule for you guys. When we get a big shot of volatility, a big shot of volatility and then we pull back, do you think the next white candle in here should be the candle that we should jump on? The key word in that was volatility, right? If we have lots of volatility in the move, let's let that volatility die off a little bit. Let's let the price action settle down. Think about it, guys. Do we have more edge in a trade? If we're taking a swing trade position, an intraday position, are we going to have more edge when we get small, concise price action or when we're chasing big whipping moves? Which one is going to give us the better edge in the lower risk entry? Kind of obvious, right? It's going to be when that volatility kind of spills off concise price action that's right okay so if I move this chart forward just one step at a time we can begin to see that price pattern that we thought could set up beginning to set up okay now if we look across here are we holding on to my rules and this doesn't have to be your rules, but my rules. Are we holding trend? And are we proving to hold price support? Answer that's yes, right? So when I see a pattern like this develop, now I have to make some decisions. Okay. Where do I want to place a price alert for what would look like a bullish entry to me? Would you guys agree if a chart, if a candle come in here like this, that would be a bullish entry? Yeah. And all I have to do is visualize that next set. What's, what's the setup that I want to see? Where's that trade? And I can't tell you if it's going to be today, tomorrow, or the next day. I can't tell you if this consolidation is going to last for a week, 
or just two or three days. I don't know that. But all I know is I can see that pattern potentially coming together. Okay, so I might place an initial alert. Okay, and sometimes the initial alert is truly that. I place initial alert in here and you could pick your point in here. I would probably go right there. Because I know if I put my alert up here, I'm just taking more risk to my stop loss, right? If this bullish candle showed up in here, I'm still maintaining trend and support. I could take that trade with a little bit less risk in that position. Does that make sense? Now, again, I can't tell you that this trade would work. I can't tell you if the trade is going to play out the next day. But I know I have a trade that's acceptable and that my stop, okay, has an acceptable risk. If it's not acceptable to the risk, there's no trade. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to waste any time on it. I'm going to look for another chart. Okay, so I place an initial alert. Let's just draw a quick line across here. I'll flatten that out, set it right where I want it. And by the way, I don't set perfect alerts. You know, this whole idea that, oh, it's one or two pennies or whatever, I don't care about that. I really don't. I'm not trading for pennies. Um, but I just want to look for that place that would make sense to me in the trade. Where am I going to get a low risk entry trade and it would make sense to me if a candle crossed above through there and gave me an opportunity in that trade. So I would, you guys know, I make my alerts pink here, okay? The only reason I do that, it's sort of easy to see for everybody when they look at my charts. So let's move this chart forward. Are we in the trade? Well, if my alert didn't let me know that this is triggered, chance I've missed it. I, I'm not in that trade. Could I get in that trade? Let's follow the rules. We have a bullish engulfing candle holding trend and holding price support. Anyone think that that might be a pretty good entry signal? So, would it be wrong, even if it didn't trigger my alert to take that trade? Would that be wrong? If I can put my stop loss underneath here, and that's an acceptable risk, that would be okay, okay to do, right? I could take that trade. Or I could say, you know what? I didn't see this. It didn't, I didn't, it didn't alert me today. So I wait. Does it matter? Well, we'll find out if it matters or not. Take the next day. Did it matter? Nope. That day, it actually triggered the alert. So, you make that decision. You make that call. We have a nice little resting pattern in here. After this period of volatility, we're holding trend and we're holding support. Do you take that trade? Still a low risk entry in the position, right? After a bullish engulfing candle, I could look at that doji and be happy with taking that trade. Okay, now my decision point is going to be whether or not I like the overall market condition. If I think the market condition is going to be like today, I'm probably not going to be racing into a bunch of long trades. Okay, I want to protect myself. Okay. So keep an eye on this and let's just, if we got into the trade, so ask that question of yourself. Are you in this trade or not in this trade? It's okay. There's no wrong answer here. 
See, if the trade moves and it moves without us, what do we do then? We just wait for the next entry into the trade. The trend is truly our friend, okay? If I miss a trade, I don't care. I really don't care. I don't agonize over it. I don't worry about it. I just wait for the next potential entry. Okay, so don't beat yourself up. We're not gonna catch every trade. Does anybody in here think you can catch every trade perfectly and be a perfect trader? It's not gonna happen. I hate to burst your bubble, but it's just not gonna happen. So make your decision. Am I taking this trade or not? Okay. Now, if you take this trade, boom, you're triggered in the position, or you may have waited and said, hey, pulled back, triggered that, that right in here. I got into that trade. I'm in the trade. Okay, now let's talk about the management here for a second. We all agree, right, that this has been a very volatile market, correct? Pretty darn volatile market. We oftentimes don't get stocks that follow through after a good price action entry, right? But one of the mistakes that I see an awful lot when I'm working with people is what do we immediately do? We finally have a, a trade that worked in our direction that's working out. What do we do? Move our stop loss like right up into here. We tighten up that stop loss so, so tight and we think we're being prudent in our trading, but honestly, guys, we're not. When we do that kind of thing, we're really guaranteeing ourselves a whole bunch of stop outs. So here's what I would suggest. If that pops and you're in night and you're in money on that trade, I would rather see people just close that position and take the profit than trying to micromanage that trade. Okay? You're going to be in a far better position just close the pro take the profit if you feel the need to micromanage the position. Because let me ask you this, guys. How many of you have watched a trade like this and the next day it pulls back like this and you try to get out of the trade, but all of your money's gone? Particularly in options, right? It's not even close to your entry into the trade, but all the money's gone because of the volatility. So if you have that nervous reaction that you're thinking, okay, I finally got a winning trade, you're probably better off just taking the profit. You know, we did that today. I held some trades that had gone negative, okay? Today, all of that profit came in. And if you ask anyone in Right Way Options, anyone that watched me do that this morning, type a Y if you agree with this statement. I took profits into the strength of the move. I didn't wait for the bottom. I didn't wait for the bounce candle, did I? We were still moving down and I took profits. Okay, I didn't micromanage. I just said, hey, we're down about 500 points, starting to approach support. I see the strength of the move. Sellers are coming in, close the trades. Exactly. That is our job to take profits. But isn't it true we often don't do that because we want more money, right? So you're going to be way better off. And here's, a, here's something I want you to think about. I, I really would like to encourage you guys to record your trading. Okay. If you do something just simple, write it down in a notebook. You know, I bought you know, X, Y, Z, you can write in here that, you know, SEP 40 option or whatever it is that you, that you bought or, or this, the number of shares that you bought, boy, there, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> 
the SEP40 option, whatever it is, and then maybe put the date in here so that you can keep track of the date. But what I want you to do is put a win column here and a lose column here. And when you have that win, I want you to tally how many winners are here and how many losers are here. Because let me tell you how awesome it is to have more wins in a column than it is losers. We all know that, right? We all want to have more winners. How do we have more winners? If this moves up like this and you're nervous, close the trade. Take the profit. Exactly. That's how you have more winners. Take the profit. I had a coaching session with a person a couple of weeks ago that trades a pretty good size account and had trades that have two and three thousand dollars profits in them and didn't take them let all that money go away and they were undoubtedly frustrated because they weren't thinking about what they're here to do and that's to take profits if we try to squeeze every single cent out of a trade Okay, we're going to end up taking a lot more losses. Okay, well, that's always, a, is it ever enough, Lauren? I closed over $5,000 in profits today. You know what I wanted? More. More. It's never enough, right? We always want more. Okay. Now, here's how you can decide whether or not you want to continue to hold this trade, Brandon. And here's the, here's the trick. If we entered this trade and our stop loss is here, should we be moving our stop loss up yet on this trade? If we're swing trading on daily charts, the answer to that is no. Because if we're going to try and stretch this trade out for more money, then we have to admit that even if this chart pulls back from here, right? If this pulls back from here, nothing has changed in that trade. Not a thing has changed in that trade setup. We have to be willing to let that happen if we want to take more money out of the trade, right? So there's your that's your answer. Is this enough money for me to just say, look, I'm nervous about this trade. I'm nervous about the market. Close it. Because a win is a win. They can't take it back once I take, take the profit off. But if you really believe this has more upside potential, then give it the room to give you the upside potential and be willing to say, well, if this has to rest three or four days or pull back a little bit, prove that it can hold this support, I'm willing to let that occur. Because isn't that really what we need to ask ourselves? Are you willing to let that occur? See, if you know that that's part of your plan and you say, yeah, you know, that's okay. If it can pull back, if it holds support, if it hangs out up, rests up here, then nothing has changed. Stay with my plan. Does that make sense? Okay. And that's how you know that I'm willing to wait to see if this can extend. And if the stock has to pull back all the way back to here and stop me out, that's still okay. 
don't like it, but that's still okay. Because isn't that the truth? If we're going to get this trade to follow through, we got to stick with the trade. One of the things I see an awful lot is a trade will work like this. The stop loss is here. The stock does do that. It pulls back like this. We close the trade for a loss. And then the trade turns around and goes right back up. Isn't that worse? Isn't that the worst thing? It's worse than losing a trade on the entry, right? Because what you did is micromanaged yourself into a loss. You didn't accept that this risk was acceptable. You chose not to take this profit when it was a profit because you wanted more. But as soon as that pulled back into a loss, boy, I can't stick with this trade anymore. I got to take the loss. You did right by planning the trade. You made a mistake in micromanagement here. If that window is a $200 swing, KG, and you're uncomfortable with that much swing, should you be trading that trade to begin with? And if you are in that trade and it's a $200 swing and you're uncomfortable with that, what should you be doing when it's in a profit? Taking the profit, right? If you're not comfortable with the price action, it's one of the things that I talked about over here. When I see all of that volatility, I know I have no edge in that. When I get these big swinging candles, big wicks and tails and stuff like that, I have no edge and that means I have no interest in the chart. I only have an interest in it when it calms down. Okay, so if all of a sudden I get big swinging candles in here, you guys know what I do, right? I enter a trade and the stock gaps up the next day, what do I almost always do? And I mean like 95% of the time, what do I do? Close the trade. I don't care what happens after that, I close the trade. I don't care if it gaps up and then just keeps running. I don't care. I got into the trade, it was a quick profit, I'm out, close the trade. And I do that particularly in, in almost every trade that gaps in my direction. Close it. I'm here to make money. I'm not here to be right. And I know that sounds funny, but it really is true. If you put the process of making money ahead of trying to be right on the trade, it just makes sense hey, I made money, that's my job here, make money, close the trade. Right? Stop the micromanagement. Now, another thing that I think messes with people all the time, and I know it messed with me a lot early on, is I would sit and stare at that trade. How many of you guys get into a winning trade and now you can't do anything else? But watch that candle wiggle around. The folks in right way options, type a Y if you agree with this statement, have watched me trade the Dow E-mini futures on a very fast 333 tick chart. I set the trade, I set the exits, Sometimes I'm not even watching it when it occurs. I don't sit and stare at a candle because there's no way that you can build any more emotion in a trade is to sit here and watch this thing wiggle around all day. I remember this so clearly as if it was yesterday. I could get into a trade. This was a long time ago. I got into a trade. 
come in, turn on, on my computer the next morning, the market opens, and I am up in this little trade. I'm up 350 bucks, and I'm like, yes, awesome. And then I went and looked at some other charts, did a few things, and I came back. It wasn't five minutes later, and now it was worth $250. And I sat all day doing nothing but watching that candle deteriorate against me because all I wanted was what I saw originally, $350. Anybody ever done that? That's all I wanted. Give me 300 It was there. Just give it back to me. That's all I want. And turn that trade into a losing trade trying to get that $350 back. It's one of the reasons I have that rule. Stock gaps in my favor, close the trade. I can tell you oftentimes if you get a stock that gaps up in a move and you take that profit immediately, oftentimes you'll get the highest print of the day. And if it does go on higher, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we did our job. We made money. See, we got to start beating ourselves up for things that happen after we close the trade because it doesn't matter. It was never our money to begin with. It's only our money when we close the trade, correct? What happens after that has no bearing on anything. It doesn't matter. It wasn't ours to begin with. Isn't it true we agonize about the trade that goes ahead and goes on and goes up and we agonize and agonize and agonize, but we pat ourselves on the back for the trade that after we took profit, it went down. Man, I'm a genius. But we kill ourselves over the trade that keeps going up. Why? It wasn't our money. Okay, so we have to stop beating ourselves up in that way. If a stock pops like this and the pressure is too high for you and you can close this trade first thing in the day and make really good money, close it and write a dollar sign in that win column. Because the more times you write dollar signs in that win column, the more money you're going to make as a trader. Okay. So if we've ex decided in this trade that this is acceptable and we want more money in this trade and we're going to wait, then we have to stay right here with our stop. Okay. We have to be willing to say the risk of this trade is acceptable. I'm willing to give up this profit. I'm willing to let this pull back if it has to to get me more money, correct? Let's move this one step forward. What happens next? Anybody take profits? At one point in time during the day, this is a huge white candle. How many of you are closing this as it goes up? You know I am. When a candle stretches out and moves like that, I'm looking for an exit. Now, if I'm not looking to close the trade, if I want to hold this for a longer time period, what am I going to do on a big candle like that? It's the same thing I did today on RWM. RWM had a big upside move the last two days. And what did I do? Big upside move, gapped away, moved up. What did I do? I wanted to hold it as a continued hedge, so I sold calls up here. I managed the position. Okay. If you're not if you're not into selling calls, if you're not into doing that kind of thing, that's fine. Then your responsibility as a trader to make money 
is to close the trade. Well, there's a problem with that, Gwen. Let me show you what I mean. If you have a two contract trade here, okay, and the stock moves up here, and you sell half of that trade, can you still turn this into a losing trade if the next day that candle is down here? Because with a big shooting star up there, wouldn't you think that it could easily be back down here? And now, all the work that I did on this trade, when I tried to micromanage, just sell half of the trade, I did all of that work and I gave all the money back. Okay, so if you're in a smaller position, two contracts, your first and only, re one contract, two contracts, your first and only responsibility is to take the profit. Close the trade. Now, if you're holding stock, you got 100 shares of the stock, sell 75 shares, and you can trail with 25 and be fine. Oh yeah, gap down. Yeah, absolutely. Big old shooting star like that. We know the downside is possible. So we could easily turn that one and one contract trade, take one in profit and trail one, I could still turn this into a losing trade. All of that effort, all of that work was for nothing. and made no money. If you have three contracts, in that trade. Now you're okay. If you've got three contracts, sell two. Because if you manage this trade carefully, it's pretty hard after you take two contracts off at a profit to turn a one contract trail into a losing trade. A lot harder to do. Would you agree? Now I even prefer to do more than that. When I have the opportunity, I, I use this rule, either two thirds or three quarters of the trade. I prefer to sell three fourths of the trade to get my goal money. And then if I wanna see if I can stretch it, I will trail it with that last little piece. Now, when I say that, I have people that immediately in coaching say, so what you're telling me is I have to trade more contracts. No, that's not what I said. If you're still a one or two contract trader, be a one or two contract trader. There's no shame in that. But do the job. Close the trade. That's a win. Right? Isn't that what we want? Don't we want to have that win-loss columns showing up with all kinds of wins over here and very few losses? The only way we can do that is take profits. Okay. As long as you keep the position sizes kind of the same, Jeff, same size, Jeff, I think you're okay. But remember, in those single contract trades, the rule is the profit comes into the trade, close the trade. Don't try to micromanage it. Don't try to squeeze every cent out of it. Close it. Okay? So if you're trading, that's fine. I've got no problem with that as long as you're keeping the size of the trades kind of similar. Okay, so we close the trade. We put money in our account, that's a win. Now, what do we do? Do we just forget about this chart and go do something else and chase the next flavor of the day? Well, I would tell you that that's kind of an unwise thing to do. 
and that's fine. Everybody starts someplace, Jeff. Keep your trades where you're comfortable with those trades and size them all similarly, okay? If one trade allows you to make a three contract trade and everything else is just a one contract trade, keep your set trade sizes similarly, okay? And don't worry about, you know, well, one's $1,000 and one's $978. I mean, don't worry about that, but keep them in a range. Okay. Now think about this. How many of you guys have missed long-term trends and trades? Because as soon as we look at something, if we've missed this initial entry, we just quit looking at this chart. Used to do that a lot. I missed it. And then I'm just flipping through the next chart. I'm just moving along. I'm not doing anything to prepare for success. Can you guys see that's exactly what I'm talking about here? Is preparing to be successful. Not chasing around trades, but preparing to be successful. If I find a chart that is moving in a nice, concise trend, I want to trade that sucker and trade that sucker and trade that sucker. And if I have to wait two weeks for the next entry, I don't care. I'm going to play that out as long as I can. As long as that trend remains clean and concise, I want to trade that trade. So in this trade, I close this out. Now my next job is to mark up this chart and let's wait for the next entry. What about this? This is where people are beating, oh my gosh, I got out of this. Oh my gosh. I don't care. That money was not my money. I made money in the trade. That's all I care about. So I'm still waiting for the next trade. Okay, doesn't matter. There's nothing in here for me to do yet. This is too high a risk a trade. There's no way I'm going to take it. So just wait for the next entry into the trade. Stock starts to pull back. Price action starts to become much more concise. How many of you look at this chart and now see, now wait a minute, trend is looking pretty good here. We're holding price support again. How many of you guys want to put a price alert in here on this trade? It may be early. It may be a little bit early. Well, this may have to rest a few more days. But how many want to prepare to be successful in this chart? Because this is what I do. I place a price alert. I look at this price action and say, hey, if this were to bounce up, and all you got to do is visualize it. If this were to bounce up here with a big bullish candle in here, do you want to be in that trade? So where do you want to be in? And I look at that chart. And I take an alert and I move it up here and say, break that alert. I'm going to take a look at this chart. Now I have to make a decision on that, whether I like it. I just have to wait. I know that if I get to take a big bullish entry on this and my stop loss is here, do I have a low risk entry? Is it, let me ask you guys, is this helping you guys? Are you seeing what I'm talking about here? That extra effort to focus in and really deeply look at the price action of the chart makes a difference. It gives you an edge. Right? It gives you an edge. So we place an alert. Let's see what happens. We move forward the next day triggered in the trade. Now, can we be assured that this is going to be a winning trade? Absolutely not. Can we be assured that the next day it's going to follow through? Absolutely not. Can I tell you with 100% assurance, assurance this is going to win as a trade? No, I can't tell you that. It could turn around tomorrow and do this. All I can do is look at the price action of the chart, plan my trades, and then let the trade work. Okay, 
I, I can't do anything else. I don't know what's ha going to happen next. But I have a nice low risk entry. It's acceptable. So let's play this out. Let's go forward one more day and see what happens here on this trade. So now the question is, are you taking profits? That's the only thing you need to ask yourself. Am I closing this trade out and taking profits? Or do I allow my stop to set right in here? See, there's the bottom of my candle, okay? Okay, am I willing to just kind of keep my stop right in that same area and see if this can play out for more money? Okay, nothing changes in this trade. You're in a winning trade now, manage that winning trade or close it and take the profits. Okay, so you guys get it. What I'm, what I'm trying to display to you here is, is this idea that, um, I say this in right way options all the time. Trades are, it's, it either is a trade or it's not a trade. And there really is no gray area in there for me. I'm not trying to make anything up. I'm not trying to predict anything. Okay, there's no gray area for me. It either is a trade or it's not a trade. Either it has acceptable risk or it doesn't have accept acceptable risk. Okay? Am I willing to hold or have I decided the chart's too risky, the market's too risky, and I just want to stand aside? There's very little gray in my trades. Yeah, qualified set, you're, you're exactly right. It's either qualified or not. Am I gonna hold this or not? Is the risk if this has to pull back into here acceptable? If not, I should close this trade. If I'm willing to hold this for the bigger gain, I have to be willing to hold. Okay. Follows through. How many of you close the trade now? Who's taking the profit? There you go. And isn't that easy, Julie? In fact, do you have to watch this candle all day long to follow that? Does it require you to just sit here and watch every little tick in the market? Nope. Okay. So if you've taken the profits, no worries. What if you want to hold it? What are you going to do here if you want to hold it? Well, you guys know, for me, if I want to hold this, I'm probably selling some calls against it. And in all likelihood, I haven't moved my stop. I sell out of the money calls to hedge the position to lower my risk in the trade. Probably going to leave the stop there. Okay, particularly in this price action that's so tight because you can easily, could you guys easily see this coming down, breaking back down through there where most people would typically move their stop to? And in option trades, how many of you guys have seen a nice winning trade turn into nothing when that occurs? So I don't want to stop out with nothing. If I'm making the decision to hold for more money, I have to honestly be willing to hold for more money. Does that make sense, guys? We, we've got to quit the micromanagement and we've got to quit beating ourselves up. Staring at these charts, letting a candle like this scare us out of the trade because we've all seen this, right? That's the next day. Okay, 
Now, if you have a multiple contract trade or multiple shares in this, could you sell two thirds or three quarters of the trade and just trail the rest of it? Absolutely. Um, in IRAs, Bill, you can sell calls. I, I do it all the time in my IRA. If you have a broker that tells you you can't, find a new broker. I sell calls in my IRA all the time. You may have to sign up for a margin account. You may have to sign a margin agreement, but you should be able to do it. Okay, I do it all the time. So let's go another day forward. Getting that pullback here in that chart. Not too many sellers here. Do you guys think that we could get another bite out of this apple? Nobody really wants to sell this here. How many of you guys think that after these three candles right here, we might want to just take our alert and move it right up here? Because wouldn't this be holding this support? and still holding this trend? Why can't it just go again? Now, if I've trailed this trade, say I had a four contract trade, I sold three contracts. I held one. If I got a buy signal over here, could I add back to the trade? Yeah, of course, right? If I close this trade out completely, I'm just waiting for the next entry into the trade. Okay. We're in the trade. We're just continue to take money out of this chart over and over and over, trading the same chart over and over, because we're studying the price action. We're looking deeper into price action and we're not chasing around candles. Now I hope this meant something to you and I hope you guys can see by doing this little bit of extra work and actually analyzing the price action of the chart rather than chasing the flavor of the day or whatever, you can do better in your trading. It doesn't require you to be any kind of a super trader. Right? Doesn't require you to be a super, you don't have to use a 3-8 trap. You can see I can do this on a chart. And here's the fun thing. When I show this to you guys, how many of you guys picked out those trade entries? Type a Y if you picked out those trade entries. You know this stuff, right? It's not that hard. We have made it hard. We've overanalyzed. We're chasing all the time rather than studying the chart. Okay. Now, like I said, I was a psycho about this. And so I do kind of take it for granted sometimes because I can instantly see a trade setup potentially coming. And I know a lot of folks can't, but it's because I used to set and do marathon sessions. And honestly, guys, I've been yelled at by my wife by sitting in front of a computer doing this on chart after chart after chart for a full 24 hours. Now, I'm not saying that's the wise thing, but I, I, was, I was obsessed with studying the price action of the charts. Because if I can find repeatable patterns, and that's all I wanted, guys. I just wanted to find repeatable patterns that repeated with a high frequency over and over and over. This right here, guys. 
pop out of the box. This right here, the PBO. Those are the two patterns, right? I can repeat those patterns over and over and over with a high expectancy rate as long as I trade concise price action within a trend. I want to be moving with the trend. Okay. And every single one of you I know looked at this and went, oh my gosh. That just looks too easy. And honestly, guys, it is. You guys have heard me say this a thousand times, and I'm going to say it another hundred thousand times. There's no easier way to make money in the market than to find a trending chart and just wait for the next entry. All we have to do is wait. Doesn't re did any of this require you to predict anything? We literally placed an alert on the trade and said, okay, do what I want you to do or I'm not interested. No prediction. No prediction. Okay. Any one of you guys can do this. And all it is is just following that price action in the charts. Making those decisions, finding those clear, concise price actions. Now let me show you one here that didn't work. Well, it hasn't worked yet. In fact, it stopped out today. And that's all. Here's a beautiful little halt. There's that trade. Pops up through, pulls back, holds support, holds trend, pops this entry signal. Okay? Stop loss goes here. Today it stopped out. Should I take that personally? No, it's not personal. It's just business. We have to make that decision. If this was an acceptable trade, we like this setup, we put this trade on, today it stopped out, sucks. Go find another trade. Because I'm telling you guys, if you follow this, these will work out more times than not. Okay, more times than not, they will work. Are they going to work every time? No, there's proof right there. They don't work every time. Now, one other quick tip here that I think is important. A stock stops us out. Does that mean we should not, we should stop looking at this chart? We should hate this chart forever? Moto says yes. <laughs> no. What we should do is just wait for the next potential entry into the trade. Right? This is a trending chart. In fact, didn't even though it stopped us out due to the volatility, did it did it hold above support for the close? Yes. So now we just wait for the next entry into the trade. Okay, we do not have, we wait for our pattern to set up. Now, I'm really going to also encourage you guys is to figure out what kind of traders you are. And by the way, right way options people see me do this. They see me do this all the time. If it's a weekly chart, if it's a daily chart, if it's an intraday chart, do I look for the exact same patterns? Yeah, I don't do anything different, do I, B12? 
It doesn't matter what time frame it is, I'm looking for the same trade setup. I don't change it up. I don't get fancy with it. I don't do anything. If I see a chart that has all kinds of volatility, I waste no time on it. If the chart is not within a trend already, I waste no time on it. You know, pop quiz, guys. If a stock is moving down, stretches down and makes a higher low, but still hasn't broke, broken the downtrend. Is it in an uptrend? No, for me, it's not. For me, it's not. Okay, so a higher low here is not a trade for me. Okay, I have to make that downtrend break and hold. Now it's a trade for me. So as you guys can see, it's not, there's not a lot of gray area here in what I do. So now I know Rick is more aggressive than I am and that works for him. For me, it just doesn't work that well. For me, I find that I lose too many trades. I it, it puts me in that situation when I'm being aggressive that I have to watch the chart incessantly. And I don't want to do that. I, re I really don't want to do that. I, I want to make my trading simple and I want to enjoy it. Okay, so it's just looking for those price patterns and trending charts. Jeez, I can't type. How hard were these pop out of the boxes here to identify? Would those have been hard trades to make? We have a nice trending chart. We're holding nicely in that trend. Just wait for the trade. Okay. Find that chart, that trend, and wait for the trade. That's all. Wait for that setup to occur and make that decision. Is this a trade I want to take or isn't it? Is the risk correct or isn't it? There should be no black and white. Or excuse me, there should be no gray. It should be all black and white. There should be no gray in that trade. It either is a setup or it's not. It's a trade I'm willing to take or I'm not. Okay, and that's what I do. And hopefully, guys, that kind of helped you give you some insight into this trading. I never know if a trade is going to work. <clears throat> the other thing, it may give you some insight into the trade and why I'm willing to hold. People will ask, I get emails all the time like a chart pulls back and says are you still holding that trade it just they're in panic you're still well yeah it hasn't broken the stop yet I'm going to hold it until the stop breaks or unless something fundamental changes in the chart or the overall market I'm going to hold that trade I T, what he's mentioning is weekly charts. He's going to long-term trades. He's looking for the exact same patterns, just in a longer-term chart. Okay, nice trade, rally up, hold a higher low. By the way, how do I know that this is the beginning of this trend? This didn't make a higher high, did it? Didn't make a higher high. Can we have a trend until we make a higher high?
hold that higher high show me the correct price pattern enter the trade and hold it see I I disagree if this makes even though this is still holding within this upside trend if this makes a lower high and fails how do i know that's not going to break that trend so this is not a trade pattern for me trends make higher highs and higher lows Yeah, so that's a no for me. I think I, th I figured that's what you meant, but I just wanted to clarify. But break through there, prove that higher high and hold that low right there. Now I've got something I can work with. Now my trend goes here. And this is a weekly chart doing the exact same thing. If I take a, a we've been doing a lot of talking about quick in and out trades and Several folks in the room are making lots of money. Um, Chuck has started trading one minute futures charts, making some of the best money he's ever made. Um, Mike Peterson has been making several thousand dollars a week trading 15 minute charts, 15 minute charts, and he's only trading two, two stocks. He's only trading Tesla and Roku. He only has two charts to check, 15 minute chart. You guys find any trades in there that can make money? The member Crispy in our room is doing the same thing with Tesla, but he's trading a two minute chart. And he's making lots of money just taking those quick two-minute entries into the trades making money yeah buying puts in this but when it's uptrending you go with the uptrend right 15 minute chart we find uptrends we find those trade patterns right over here break the downtrend hold look for your entry into the trade winning trade just repeat over and over and over do the same thing over and over and over again be willing to wait for the trade so it doesn't matter what time frame it is if you know what patterns it are that trade and would you guys agree that this pattern is the most common pattern in the market the peak and valley pattern by far the most common pattern in the market all I want to do is exploit that pattern okay yeah they're using very near-term options they're in and out there this is just a trade where they're in for just a part of the day and they're out they're following the rules 70 deltas that kind of thing 70 to 80 deltas following those price patterns but they're just repeating these quick in and out trades following the same price patterns now the reason i added in that pop out of the box in here If you look at this price action in this chart, what's the prominent of, of all the candles in here? What's the prominent move of this chart? This chart spends more time going sideways than it does going up or down. And you're going to find that in every chart. More time is spent going sideways than it is up or down. So as long as those sideways moves, occur within that trend we're still holding right i just wait for the entry signal to occur 
to take that tray. Okay. Um, yeah, what, what Malcolm's saying there, and let me just clarify this. Mike Peterson, that's doing this and making a lot of money doing this, he practiced his intraday trading. This is no joke, guys. And when Mike practices, I'm telling you, he works at it. He practiced on a 15-minute chart in paper trade for six months. Six months until he proved to himself that his win-loss ratio was high enough to go live. He didn't just decide tomorrow he's going to start trading intraday charts. He practiced until he proved that it was working. How many of you are willing to put that kind of commitment into your training to prove that these patterns pay off because until you're willing to do that kind of work until you're willing to study that price action chart and do that work you're destined to continue to make those same mistakes because it requires confidence in your skills that you're seeing this trade correctly or you're this setup correctly you're entering and exiting as you should I never recommend day trading to people because most people that day trade lose money. Okay. And that's no joke. Why do they allow day traders if most people lose money day trading? Because brokers make lots of money doing it. They're going to allow anything that makes them money. It doesn't mean it's right. but they're going to allow all of it as long as you have money. You come up to a roulette trade table at a casino and you place nothing but sucker bets. They're going to let you do that all night long until that bankroll runs out. Same thing is going to happen here in the market. So you need to do the job. You need to work through the details. You need to practice. You should never day trade until you feel that you've got it down. Because even Mike, Crispy, any of these people that are doing it full time now, live, they say it's terribly stressful. Mike Peterson and both Crispy call it the white knuckle ride sometimes. butt puckering <laughs> that's right that's right so make sure you do the work that you practice remember what did I just show you here on the daily charts guys I showed you something that I went through one step at a time and I studied the price pattern I didn't take this lightly I did the work I studied the price action of the chart I found out the price patterns that work successfully over and over and over again and I reviewed them and reviewed them and reviewed them and reviewed them until it's difficult for you to miss the setup. You know when it's the right trade and when it's not. Okay, do the work. Okay, this is a job. Trading is a job. It's a business. Do the work. Because if you do the work, you'll start to see success like Malcolm here. Malcolm learned the 3-8 trap in, in that 3-8 trap class. And Malcolm, if you don't mind sharing, what's that done for your accounts? And there's nothing magical about the 3-8 trap. It's just following a set of rules, right? It's being disciplined to a set of rules and following that program over and over and over. Not being fancy, not being wild, not being, not being anything. It's being focused into your trade. Three hundred percent return. 
What was your trading results like before that, Malcolm? You see, guys, I'm not 300% loss. Big swing. <laughs> well done. Well done. Um, um, yes, if he's making 300% returns, he's doing it with options. My point is Malcolm put in the work and the effort. Okay, if you put in the work and the effort, you study, you study, you study. It's not just running into a trade. Hearing this and think, okay, now all I got to do is look for these two things and I'm golden. No, you've got to do the work. Okay, guys, look at the chart, study the price action, line them out. And then, you know, it's, it's amazing. Success comes to those who do the work. If you try to take the easy path all the time, take the easy road. I don't want to work at it. Just point me to the two things that, you know, this crosses, then I can trade, and that's always going to win. Guys, you'll be searching for that for the rest of your life, and it doesn't work. You have to do the price evaluation. So hope that meant something to you guys tonight. Hope you got something out of this hour and a half. I didn't mean, mean to go this long. Okay. Um, uh, the option basics class, Dave, is coming up on the 26th, I believe. 26th. So do that study in those price actions. Take those, just find a bunch of trending charts and go back and do that work that I just showed you. Take the chart back and go through and see if you can pick out the entries. Talk through the trade. Talk through it. You know, I've said this before. My wife a lot of times tells me I'm crazy and she's right. And I'm, I'm, when it comes to this stuff, I'm just kind of a, a, a complete nerd and I completely you know, I own up to it. I'm a nerd when it comes to this stuff, when it comes to price action. Okay. But I truly believe this, guys. If if this is a trade, you should be able to explain this trade to someone who has never traded before why this is the right trade for you. My wife, she she she'd come along and she goes, I thought I heard you talking to somebody. I said it was. I was talking to myself. You should be able to verbalize why that's, this is a trade for you. You should know why. You should be able to explain it to anybody. Ex look at that chart. I got it. This is why this is a trade now. Now, if you know this is a trade and this is a setup, now I can hold it. I can manage it. I don't have to put my emotion into it. I can trade that position, and it makes all the difference in the world. All right? Thank you, guys. Thanks for your participation tonight. I really appreciate it, and I hope you got something out of this. I really do. I really I, – I know this sounds um, – I, I, you know, a lot of the instructors and things out there, they just want to blow smoke up your hind end. You know, and they just want to tell you, oh, you know, follow this indicator. And this crosses over this and this does a backflip over here. And man, you're just going to make so much money. And, and we get enticed by that kind of stuff. But we find out over and over and over it doesn't work, right? What works is just following the chart, following the price action. Okay. That's all that matters. And if you can get to that point and just make your trading simple, you enjoy it a whole lot more. There's not a lot of stress in it because it either is a setup or it's not a setup. It's a trade or not a trade. And now once we're in the position, our job is just to manage it, try to take that money out. Cool. 
thanks so much guys for sticking around awesome t thank you guys very very much i want to wish you all a fantastic evening and we'll see you back here bright and early tomorrow morning i wish you all the best have a good evening everyone Thank <laughs> you.